Hello, my name is Kazunori Takahashi from OYO Corporation. In this EDAGE lecture, I'm going to talk about tree inspection with radar concerning velocity distribution and curve plate paths inside tree trunk. These are what I would like to cover in this e lecture. I start with a brief introduction and I go over methods to estimate propagation velocity of tree trunk in the cases of constant and distributed velocity. Then I will talk about imaging of tree trunk using estimated velocity. I will also give numerical and lab measurement examples and the summary is given at the end. Let me start with the introduction. There are many trees in the city. Some of these trees are getting old and need maintenance because decayed trees have a risk of collapse, which may cause injury and traffic problems, as you can see in the photos. In order to mitigate the problem, we try to provide risk assessment by inspecting and di diagnosing trees. One of our tools for the tree inspection is ground penetrating radar. Because it is easy and quick, it's capable of imaging inside structure of tree trunk and completely non-invasive. So we try to detect and image decay in tree trunk and to determine the size of decayed area. Refraction measurement may be the most straightforward way to do it. In this measurement, we have a tree trunk and we scan transmitting and receiving antenna together around the tree trunk like this figure. We can observe reflections if there is a decayed spot or a void inside tree trunk. If we simply plot the refraction measurement data for the trunk shown at the top, which has a cross-shaped hole, then the data look like a clover as shown in the figure at the bottom. So it does not really show the real structure. With this result, it is difficult to evaluate the decay area. So we use imaging technique, migration, or synthetic aperture radar processing. And for this, we need to set the velocity or permittivity of tree trunk. To estimate the velocity, we can use transmission measurement data. In the transmission measurements, we have a trunk, and we fix a transmitting antenna at the position and we scan only the receiving antenna around the trunk. In this configuration, the receiving antenna goes away from the transmitting antenna in the beginning of the scan, and it goes closer to the tra transmitting antenna again in the second half. So the observed transmission signals look concave upwards, just like the uh, figure on the right. It means that these signals propagated along ray passed with various lengths, so the transmission data can be seen similar to CMP data. If the trunk has a higher velocity, the concave becomes shallower, like the blue line, and if the velocity is lower, the, it gets deeper, like the red line. So applying velocity analysis, commonly used for CMP data, and by evaluating the curve shape, we can estimate the velocity. To estimate the velocity of tree trunk as a constant value, we calculate the distance from transmitting position to receiving position with a straight line, and then calculate reliable times of transmission signals with the constant velocity. We can calculate these for various receiving positions and also for various velocities, just like the velocity analysis for CMP data. We can then evaluate which velocity or permittivity best explains the data by calculating the same balance. However, when we think about real and live trees, a constant velocity is not the case. It is because the structure of tree trunk is concentrically layered, as we can see in the pictures. Usually, outside part is active, so it is wetter, 
and the inside is inactive and drier. So the outside usually show higher permittivity and lower velocity, and the inside tends to be lower permittivity and higher velocity. A previous work directly measured the permittivity of a living tree, and the result looks like this. In this figure, horizontal axis is the distance from the tree trunk center, and vertical axis is permittivity. It shows clear increase of permittivity, and this is what we try to estimate for accurate imaging. To do this, we first model the velocity distribution with, the, with this model, which is a very simplified linear model. In this model, the velocity linearly and concentrically decreases with radial position. With this model, we can parameterize the distribution with two parameters, A and B, which indicate velocity gradient and velocity at the center. With the model, velocity analysis is performed similarly to the constant velocity case. However, because now the object has a velocity distribution, ray paths must be curved, as shown in this figure. So we use a ray tracing to calculate the length and light bulb time along with the curved ray paths. And then we calculate semblance as a function of two model parameters. So the result will be two-dimensional distribution of semblance values. By finding the parameters that give the maximum semblance value, we can estimate the velocity distribution. Now let's consider reflection imaging with the estimated velocity. In the case of constant velocity, imaging a tree trunk can simply be done by using diffraction stacking method. We just need to calculate the distance between data sampling position and imaging position with a straight line and calculate travel times with a constant velocity and with some amplitude at the travel time for all sampling positions to get the intensity at an imaging position. If there is a velocity variation, ray paths are no longer straight lines and they are curved. But we now know the velocity distribution. So we have sampling position here and the imaging position here and curved ray paths between them can be calculated by using the two-point ray tracing algorithm which is used for the estimation of velocity distribution. Then we can just sum amplitude at the travel time as same as the constant velocity case. Now let me show you how the method work with uh, simulated data. I simulated radar data using two-dimensional finite difference time domain method. And a tree trunk with 30 centimeter radius is modeled. In the simulation, the permittivity is set to 15 at the center and 35 at the perimeter, which leads to the which leads to these values of the parameter A and B of our velocity model. With this model, transmission measurement is simulated with 94 receiving positions, and the data shown in the figure on the right are obtained. By calculating with various model parameters, we can obtain the distribution of semblance value with respect to the parameters A and B. The white circle shows the uh, true model parameters and the maximum semblance value is obtained at the white cross, which indicate minus 0.08 and 0.075. These are close to the real values. So we obtained the model velocity distribution as shown at the bottom. Then we use the estimated velocity distribution in imaging. Again, we use the simulated data and the model is the same as the previous example. But airfield void with 10 cm radius is set at the center and deflection data are calculated. 
This slide compares the results. The left image just plots the low waveforms. In this case, depth is calculated with constant velocity, which is the average velocity. The middle image is the result of imaging with constant velocity, so assuming straight wave path. The white horizontal dashed lines indicate the size of airfield void, and the imaged void is slightly smaller than the model in the left and middle images. The light image is the result of imaging considering curved wave paths. We can see the maximum amplitude is approximately at the 10 cm radius, so uh, it accurately images the void. The figure on the right shows the amplitude profiles of these three images in radial axis. It is clear that with the average but constant velocity, the airfield void is imaged smaller than the real. In this specific case, it is more than 20% smaller. However, considering curved lay paths, the imaged void is nearly in the correct size. Now I show a lab measurement example. We got a relatively fresh rock and the hole was drilled in the middle, as shown in the photo. Transmission and reflection measurements were carried out on the log with GSSI 4000 and 2 GHz antenna. The figure on the left shows the data acquired by the transmission measurement. Semblance is calibrated on this data and distribution is obtained as shown on the right. The white cross shows the maximum semblance value and it gives the estimation of the velocity model. In this velocity model, relative permittivity at center is 16.4 and it is 27.8 at the perimeter. We then use the estimated velocity distribution in the refraction imaging. These are the imaging results. On the left, it is a result with a constant velocity on the right, it is considering the curved lay path. We can see that the imaging of a hole is fo more focused if curved lay path are and velocity distribution is taken into account. Overlaying on the photo, we can see that the imaging with constant velocity has high intensity spots, not only at the hole. So we can say imaging Considering velocity distribution and curved lay path gives, uh, gives the better result, more accurately reflecting the real structure. So, in this e lecture, I showed some techniques that can be used for tree inspection with radar. By carrying out transmission measurement on the trunk and by performing velocity analysis, we can estimate a constant velocity which may correspond to the average velocity. If we use ray tracing in the velocity analysis, it is possible to estimate the velocity distribution. Also, if we combine diffraction stacking and ray tracing, it is possible to perform imaging considering velocity distribution and curved lay paths. It is illustrated that the imaging quality is improved by those techniques and we can obtain more focused image that may help better determination of decayed area. I would like to thank my colleagues for their support on measurements. If you liked this presentation, please visit the EAG YouTube channel for more e-lectures. With that, I'd like to conclude. Thank you for watching.